Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome to another video brought to you by LearningNewMac.com. Today we're going to be talking about editing in iPhoto. The edit button can be found at the bottom right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose a photo first, and then we'll go down to edit it. So first I'm going to choose this photo of my brother and my cousin. I'm going to go down to the bottom right and hit edit, and that brings the photo larger. Some people like to use full screen when editing. It uh, removes some of the distractions from the edges, and that's totally fine. Uh, that's using the top right corner with the little up and down arrows. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it, though, the way it is, and just go through some of these editing options at the right. Uh, the first one we see is quick fixes. Now, these are fairly obvious. We have rotate, which just not, does 90 degrees at a time. We have enhance. Now, this is kind of a one-button quick fix for, for all the colors and brightness. Um, you'll see in a moment that it's a quick way of just doing this adjust option. Enhance is kind of hit or miss. You can try it. Let's see what happens. Well, it actually did pretty darn good. It brightened up the photo quite a bit. Uh, for now, I'm going to actually revert it to the original at the very bottom. Uh, fix red eye. This particular photo does not need it, so we'll find another example for that later. So the straighten tool, so that we can straighten a photo. You'd see really bad examples of... Uh, awkward angle when you take photos of sunsets they almost never come out perfectly straight but the way it works is you click on it and down here we have this little slider and you just drag this to the right or left to get the angle that you want and what it's doing is just cropping off the little slices at the top bottom and left and right so I'm actually going to undo that at the bottom uh, here we have crop which is exactly what it sounds like if I wanted to crop this image in tighter I could just go ahead and drag the edges and notice it has kind of a rule of thirds grid, which is pretty great. If you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, I'd say Google it. It's just a photography technique. Now the other advantage to using the crop is they have all these constraint options where you can constrain it to certain uh, ratios. So if you're going to go get prints and you needed 4 by 6s a lot of times the camera's not shooting in an exact 4 by 6 ratio. So now I can make sure that when I go take it to the printer, I know it's going to get the right ratio. I'm going to go ahead and reset it and just uh, get out of the crop tool. Now down here we have retouch. Um, this one you can use for removing blemishes. Uh, as an example, I'm going to go ahead and just remove uh, the logo for my brother's sweatshirt. So right here there's this little uh, polo logo and I'm going to shrink this size down and I'm just going to kind of paint over it. And voila, there it goes, it's gone. So retouch is actually for removing blemishes such as maybe a ketchup stain or you know maybe you have like a little bit of chocolate ice cream on your face. So next we're going to talk about effects. I'm going to leave the effects window up to you to explore. Basically we just have a bunch of little buttons that you can click to add filters to your photos. Now up here we have adjust. Now this one's really fun. Um, it's intimidating at first because there's this kind of funky histogram at the top. Um, we have all these different sliders and I'm going to go down through them but really the best way to learn them is to just try them on your photo because I want to reiterate that editing in iPhoto is completely non-destructive and no matter what you do with these sliders you can always go down to the bottom and hit revert to original. So first we have this histogram. Now the histogram is kind of weird but all it's showing us is the distribution of color. So well, actually, uh, let me rephrase that. It's the distribution of tones, but they're showing it in the three major colors, red, green, and blue. Um, so this particular photo, if we were to you know, look at this photo and look at the histogram for it, it's telling us that a lot of the color is weighted towards the left side, which is the dark tones. And if you look at the bottom, there's a little black rectangle, a little gray one, and a little white one. So these are the areas of light tones, and there's really not many. I mean, we have this little post is a light tone. Uh, we have uh, Jay's shirt and little shoelace here. That might be a light tone. It's borderline mid. And then we have a little bit of his sunglasses over here that's in the light. So that's really it. As far as mid tones go, that's stuff like skin tones. Uh, this, this brown jacket is a mid tone. But then if you look at how much dark tones there are, and we have all these trees back here, trees here, uh, most of it is in the darks. Now, 
if I wanted to kind of balance it out a little bit, I could start with these sliders and try that. So I'm going to grab this gray slider, the mid-tones, and I'm going to drag it to the left towards the, the mountain peak. And notice it's kind of stretching it out. And now if we just take a moment and compare this to the original. So this is a, an awesome tip, my favorite part of editing in iPhoto. If you hold down the shift key, it shows you the original. So here's the original, and then here's the new one. And so dragging that little mid-tone slider to the left really brightened up the photo and it kind of doled down this background. Now, the thing you want to avoid is removing dark tones completely. So if I go all the way out over here, now if you look at my histogram, this little the edge of this little mountain is not even close to the left side at all. And it's just the photo's just kind of washed out. So you do want a little bit of dark tones, just not, you know, overpowering the image. Now I'm going to try the the light tones on the all the way far right. I'm just going to drag that little white rectangle inwards. So that's brightening it up even further. I'm not going to go too far with that one because it can quickly get blown out, as you can see. So just maybe to the edge. So I think an ideal dynamic range of tones would have, at the, all the way left, the, just the very bottom of this little mountain barely touching, and the all the way right, the, the little edge of this mountain touching. Um, and then kind of a neat, nice even distribution in between those. But, you know, sometimes you might want to have a really dark photo to set a kind of, you know, sinister mood, and that's okay. So exposure, down beneath that, we have the overall exposure of the image. If I take that to the right, you can see the photo's getting brighter and brighter until it's almost, you know, not even usable. Um, and notice what it did to the histogram. Look it up here. All the colors tend to just head straight towards the right to the light tones. So I'm going to go back to the middle. And I'm not even going to mess with that. Since I already kind of tweaked the histogram, I think exposure is going to be okay. Contrast, this just enhances, well, <clears throat> contrast, this really reveals the distinction between lights and darks. So if I go all the way right, we have a really stark difference between this dark area and the, this light area here. If I go all the way left, the photo looks very flat. So. I'm going to increase contrast just slightly on this particular photo. Uh, again, I'm going to hold the shift key to see the original. The original was much darker and a lot less contrast. Now saturation, you know, I don't really know if this photo needs much color intensity change, but we could try it. So if I drag this to the right, it gets more colorful. And like I said, if we go too far, now they look pink, so I'm going to go back. Um, the really nice thing about saturation is they have this little option down here that says avoid saturating skin tones. So if I uncheck that and do that again, look at how badly pink they look like they're sunburnt. <laughs> so if I back this up, I'm just going to barely move the saturation above the middle mark there. Um, and this one, at that, with that subtle of a change, this check mark doesn't really even matter. Definition. Um, this one, just like it says right there, clarify details and improve local contrast. Um, so what I take from that is around the edges of, of the image, you know, like let's say the edge of this hat, um, the edge of his shoulder, uh, areas like that, it's going to basically sharpen it and, and improve local contrast, which is the, the little, the contrast in those little areas. So I'm going to drag this up. And yeah, it definitely looks like a sharper image, um, almost unreal. So I'm going to actually just barely move that up to, let's say, around, I don't know, let's choose an arbitrary number down here towards the left. Let's try 20. Um, that looks decent. But I think if you go too far, it just, it looks, it's a little bit too much, almost cartoony. Highlights, I really don't have any examples uh, in this particular photo. Um, but what it's supposed to do is increase detail in the really bright, almost overexposed areas. Um, there's really no areas like that in this photo, so we'll, we'll do a different one in a moment. Um, shadows, this brightens up the shadow areas. So back here into this roof, these trees, in between them right here. If you drag it up and you watch those areas, they get brighter. And if I go really far, now it just looks bizarre. Um, but it's a great way of brightening just the dark parts of a photo. Sharpness, just like it sounds. Now if you take a photo that's too blurry or out of focus, a lot of times even sharpness or definition is not going to help you. Um, but sharpness 
is just like it sounds. It makes the photo have a more rich texture and, and a sharper look. Uh, I don't like to use that one too much. And denoise. Um, so noise is something that gets created when there's low light conditions. So if you look back here in this area, you can see a little bit of it. I'm gonna brighten up shadows just a little bit so you can really see the noise. You see right all these little speckles. So this is what they call noise. And this is just because the camera had a lack of information and not enough light. And so it did its best guess to kind of fill in the dots. So what we can do a lot of times is, is turn up the denoise option and that's supposed to smooth it out. The problem with that is, notice it also smoothed out the texture on their faces and they almost look unreal, kind of like uh, photoshopped covers of a magazine or something. Um, so, you know, unfortunately denoise, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of either, um, just because it loses a lot of other texture that should be there. Down here we have temperature. So if the overall temperature of the image was kind of bluish because maybe it was taken early morning uh, or late in the evening, um, or maybe it's really warm and yellowish because you took it inside with some uh, incandescent lighting. Um, you can drag this to the right to make it more kind of warm and reddish or to the left to make it cooler. Um, this one actually, I think if we went to the right just barely, I think, I think that's actually necessary. Uh, tint, sometimes you'll have a color cast on your photo that'll make it kind of a pinkish magenta hue. Um, you might have a green tint on it and, and again you just drag these to counterbalance it. Okay so here I have this photo from Lake Powell. Um, this is a good example for straightening because you can just barely tell it's tilting to the left a little bit because of this water line. So I'm going to go to straighten and I'm just going to drag this little slider slightly to the right and I think that's a little bit better right there and I would hit done. Um, back under adjust this particular photo, if you look at the histogram, a lot of it is kind of weighted towards the right at the highlights area. So I'm gonna drag this little highlights option to the right to kind of bring back some of the detail in those clouds. And it just kind of gives me a little bit more, you know, well, detail. Um, the other thing we can do with this particular photo is boost saturation. Um, kind of a low light situation so we lost a lot of the blue sky and some of these red rocks and I want to bring that back so I'm going to bring up saturation. There we go, that looks nice. Uh, let's do a little bit of shadows. If I bring that up you can notice that dark rock gets a little bit brighter. Maybe just a little bit of contrast. And so if we compare this to the original, there's the original and here's the new one. It's almost an entirely different photo. Okay, so as far as red eye goes, here's an example. This is the best I could find for an example. And if you notice my eyes here, just a little red. Allen's look okay. So I'm gonna go up to the fix red eye button under quick fixes. So first, if you just hit fix red eye, notice it has this option that says auto fix. And, and yeah, they're actually pretty much fixed. Um, so you could just hit done. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just demonstrate the manual option just in case the auto fix doesn't do it for you. So I'm going to uncheck that. My eyes go back to red. Um, what I'm going to do is just use this size, this size slider. And you want the size slider to be just bigger than your pupils. So I'm going to go in here and actually uh, I'm going to go a little bit larger on that. My mouse is enlarged a little bit. And I'm just going to click right there. Fixes it. And I'm going to click right over here. And fixes it. Now, if you have trouble, you know, with this little tiny circle, you can use the bottom left and zoom in. Uh, just drag that little slider inwards, and then that way you can you can really get in there and precisely hit on the red eye. Um, but that's it, super easy. So I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm gonna hit done. And uh, now one final note about editing. Uh, let's say we made all of our our adjustments. Um, you know, we got the photo looking the way we want. Once you're finished, the thing about it is you don't have to hit done or anything like that. You can just back out of the editing. If, it, if I just go up and hit the photos button at the top left here and get out of it, you know, it'll preserve those changes uh, along with all the rest of them that I did. So that about wraps up editing an iPhoto. Thank you very much. You guys have a good rest of your day.